Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, AirAbility announces flying scholarships for disabled individuals. Virgin Galactic resumes flight testing. ISS operations extended through 2030. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. AirAbility announces flying scholarships for disabled individuals. AirAbility is a UK charity about the commendable mission of providing disabled individuals access to the challenge of piloting an aircraft. Across the broad sphere of human endeavor, few undertakings instantiate freedom from restriction so powerfully as flight. This axiomatic truth is particularly well understood by AeroBility's founders and staff, many of whom are themselves disabled aviators. Through various fundraising initiatives and thoughtful management strategies, AeroBility allows disabled individuals to get behind the controls of an aircraft for a fraction of the commercial rate. On April 28th, AeroBility announced its 2023 scholarship application window had opened and would remain so for a six-week period, ending on June 9th. Awardees will receive five-hour flying scholarships, which may be applied toward the attainment of pilot certification. AeroBility 2022 scholarship recipient Andy Braybrook of Grantham Lincolnshire stated, quote, The scholarship has given me something to study toward and look forward to each week, and proven that my fear of not being able to fly the plane was completely unnecessary, end quote. Mr. Braybrook, who was paralyzed in a 2017 motorcycle accident, added, quote, As soon as I saw the scholarship advertised, I knew that a door was now open to me, which would not have been had I not been disabled and not known about airability, end quote. Coming up after the break, two U.S. Army Apache helicopters collide near Fairbanks. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit flyskyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Two U.S. Army Apache helicopters collide near Fairbanks. On Thursday, April 27th, two AH-64 Apache attack helicopters assigned to the U.S. Army's 1st Attack Reconnaissance Battalion, 25th Aviation Regiment, went down in the vicinity of Healy, Alaska. The helicopters, each crewed by two Army aviators, collided while returning to Fairbanks, Alaska's Fort Wainwright after a training flight. Two of the four service members expired at the crash site, a third succumbed during transport. The fourth suffered injuries of unknown severity. The cause of the accident remains under investigation. Avalon orders 4737 MAX aircraft. Avalon announced it had entered into an agreement with Boeing by which it will take delivery of 4737 MAX narrowbody airliners between 2027 and 2030. At current list prices, the deal is worth upward of $4 billion. Avalon acquired its first 737 MAX in 2017 and its 1,000th in 2023's first quarter. The newly announced 40-plane deal builds on the Sino nippo irish company's strong relationship with Boeing and evinces growing market confidence in the long-term demand for the once-troubled aircraft model. EAA seeking to fill 700 temporary air venture jobs. The Experimental Aircraft Association will presently host walk-in hiring events ahead of its AirVenture 2023 fly-in, the event's 70th anniversary. The EAA is looking to hire individuals to fill as many as 700 temporary positions throughout the expansive late July event. Available positions include retail associates, security and event support, auto parking cashier, camper registration, facility staff, and bartender. Qualified retail and auto parking applicants will be at least 14 years old. Qualified security applicants will be at least 16 years old. All other positions require applicants to be a minimum of 18 years old. Piper Aviation Museum dedicates new exhibit. 
The Piper Aviation Museum celebrates the American light aircraft mark after a fashion befitting its storied and historically significant past. The museum exists to preserve the history and legacy of the Piper Aircraft Corporation and its founding family. In April 2023, the Piper Aviation Museum dedicated a new exhibit featuring the airplane styling and artwork of longtime Piper Aircraft Corporation Head of Styling and Design, Dick Clark, not to be confused with the perennial adolescent DJ and American Bandstand host. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Virgin Galactic resumes flight testing. Virgin Galactic, the California-based spaceflight subsidiary of archetypal billionaire cool guy knight Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Group, resumed flight testing of its VSS Unity spacecraft on Wednesday, April 26, 2023. The non-powered gliding test flight occasioned the first instance in which Unity has flown independently of a carrier aircraft since July 2021, when the unique vessel rocketed Branson and Virgin Galactic employees Beth Moses, Sarisha Banla, and Colin Bennett to an altitude of approximately 278,900 feet, albeit not without consequence. The Wednesday morning flight departed Virgin Galactic Spaceport America and was borne aloft by Virgin Mothership Eve, a Burt Rutan designed, scaled composites built, four engine twin fuselage twin empennage behemoth named for Yvette Branson, Sir Richard's mother. Upon attaining an altitude of approximately flight level 460, Eve released Unity from an underwing hardpoint between the larger aircraft's twin fuselages, allowing company pilot CJ Sturkow and Nicola Pisil to glide the space plane back to Spaceport America, where it landed without incident. The next step for Virgin Galactic will be a powered test flight of VSS Unity, during which, according to Virgin Galactic, four company mission specialists will join two pilots in, quote, assessing the customer experience and ground-based training, end quote. Virgin has yet to disclose a date for the powered flight. And after these messages, ISS operations extended through 2030. Unbridled passion. Unequaled performance. Unlimited possibilities. Hartzell Aviation, you are cleared for takeoff. Introducing Hartzell Aviation, leading general aviation companies united by the Hartzell guiding principle of built on honor. A commitment to uphold the highest standards in quality, performance, and support. Hartzell Propeller, Hartzell Engine Tech, Hartzell Aerospace Welding. We are Hartzell Aviation. Now boarding at HartzellAviation.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Welcome back. ISS operations extended through 2030. The International Space Station partners, the US, Canada, Japan, and participating EU nations have committed to extending the life and operations of the unique orbital platform in which multinational spacefarers have lived and worked for upwards of 22 years, all the while conducting cutting-edge research in microgravity for the benefit of humankind. The members of the ISS consortium, excepting Russia, have asserted their respective intentions of financially, academically, and materially supporting ISS operations through 2030. The station was originally chartered to operate through 2024. The Russian Federation, however, in the wake of international tensions and economic and technological sanctions imposed following Moscow's February 2022 invasion of Ukraine, will withdraw from the ISS initiative in 2028. Notwithstanding Russia's departure, NASA and its partner Japanese, Canadian, and EU agencies will continue to work to ensure an uninterrupted human presence in low Earth orbit and make ready for a safe and orderly eventual transition from the ISS to future commercial orbital platforms. Currently, no single ISS partner is capable of operating the installation without the others. Ergo, Russia's decision to opt out of the ISS partnership occasions numerous and worrying issues, as the station's Russian module provides the propulsion by which the football field size contraption is kept from falling to Earth. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching!